This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's pull everything together with the first example that we've got to look at with regards to the functional currency. Uh, what it wants us to go through and do there is to look at how this transaction would be recorded in Jones's financial statement. So financial statements being statements of profit or loss, statements of financial position, if, if you so wish, uh, statements of cash flows. Uh, and it says there at the top, Jones Inc. has its functional currency of the US dollar. So everything that it goes through and enters into with regards to transactions, it doesn't matter what currency it is, it will need to be translated into that functional currency. Okay, So if it's a different currency to the dollar, it needs to be translated. Uh, it says there, it trades with several suppliers overseas and bought goods. So we've made a purchase costing 400,000 dinar uh, on the 1st of December 2015. So we will need to find out what the exchange rate was there on the 1st of December 2015. So down at the bottom there, we can see that we have the historic rate, can't we? Okay, which is 4.1 dinar to the dollar. Okay. Uh, Jones paid for the goods on the 10th of January 2016 so this is clearly a credit purchase so when we pay for the goods we will need to look at the rate that's in place on that date being the 10th of January 2016 so again even though it's a different date and the rate different we still do refer to it as the historic rate okay so the historic rate on the 10th of January is 4.4 dinar to the dollar uh, your year end is there is it as the 31st of December so we will need to, therefore, at the 31st of December 2015, identify what's monetary and what's non-monetary. Anything monetary, we retranslate gains and losses to profit or loss. Anything non-monetary, we do not retranslate, do we? So what we've got there is if we go through there and look at, is it the 1st of December 2015? Uh, what you've got there is that you've made a credit purchase. So let's do the difficult bit first, shall we? Get the journal entry. So we debit my purchases and credit my payables, don't we? But with how much? That's the key issue, isn't it? Well, it's 400,000 dinars, isn't it? The rate that was in place on that date, I think, was it 4.1. Okay, yeah, 4.1 dinars to the dollar. So 400,000 divided by 4.1 in terms of dollars gives me the 97561. There we go. Uh, so that's the amount of dollars. That you would record in Jones's financial statements. If you like, that's your initial recognition, isn't it? Debit purchases, credit payables. Then what happens is it there on the 31st of December 2015. Uh, that's the reporting date, isn't it? And what we need to do there is we need to identify monetary and non-monetary items. So if we go through there and think about the non-monetary, then what you have there is that you have your inventory, don't we? Uh, so your inventory, you will leave. You do not translate it. So your closing inventory is there at 97561. Okay, that's your closing inventory at the end of the year. It's non-monetary, so you do not retranslate it. However, you do have your monetary items, don't we? Uh, and what's readily convertible to cash here is your payable, isn't it? So we need to go through there and convert the 400,000, don't we, at the end of the year. The closing rate that you've got there at the end of the year, the 31st of December 2015, is at 4.3 dinars to the dollar. So your monetary at the end of the year, your monetary payable is 93023, isn't it? So that's what you would show.
on the statement of financial position, isn't it? Okay. However, what you've got there is that the payable was 97561. So what you've got there, therefore, is that there is a reduction in the payable. So 97561. Uh, less 93023 to bring it down to what it is now. You have a reduction in your payable of 4538. That reduction is going to go through there, isn't it? Through the statement of profit or loss uh, as an exchange gain or loss. You can determine whether or not it's a gain or whether it is a loss. Because what you've got there is if you think about your payable, your payable is a credit balance. So to reduce a credit balance, you will debit your payable, isn't it? With the 4538. And therefore you credit your foreign exchange gain, isn't it? Credits are good within profit or loss. So you have a gain of 4538 okay so here what you've got is that statement of profit or loss is a gain and um, if you like that's part of your operating activities isn't it so throw it there within your operating cost it's a trading transaction isn't it okay excellent uh hopefully you're all happy with that figure there so at the end of the year statement of financial position shows a payable of 93023 and you've got there a gain in profit or loss of 4538. There we go. There's the journal entry, just to recap. Then what you've got was it on the 10th of January 2016. That's when we pay the cash, isn't it? Okay, so what we're going to have to do there is that there will be a credit entry to the bank. So we pay 400,000 dinars, but to get 400,000 dinars, we need to look at the rate that's in place on that date. And the rate that's in place there is that 4.4, isn't it? So the rate that's in place is 4.4. So the amount of cash that we actually pay on that date is 90909. Okay, that's the physical amount of cash that we pay in dollars to settle that 400,000 dinar invoice. What we then need to do is we then need to debit the payable, don't we? Well, what was the payable at? We're paying the invoice in full. So we remove the invoice and the payable from our accounts. It's there as a 93023. The issue that you've got now is that you've removed the payable, so you've debited the payable with the full amount. The credits and the debits aren't equal, are they? So what we need to do there is we need to throw in a balancing figure. I think it's a credit figure. Because you have an excess of debits over credits. That credit is 2114. And that credit there, again, is good on the statement of profit or loss, isn't it? And that's the a foreign exchange gain. It's just a balancing figure. And the reason why it is a gain is because it is a credit in profit or loss, isn't it? Okay. Again, it's a trading transaction. So you could put that there through your operating costs. Okay. There we have it. That, that's pretty straightforward. I don't think you get anything much more complicated than that within the exam. The issue that you have is it's not just a nice, simple, isolated example like that. That's straightforward. There's a lot more going on within the overall bigger question as part of question one that leads into, if you like, your group accounts. You might have to deal with that transaction there within a group accounts situation. But don't worry about that. Don't get stressed. Don't get panicky. Just focus on getting that right first. Let's now look at a slightly more complicated example than the one that we've just previously looked at. 
which now doesn't involve a trading transaction with regards to, say, a payable or potentially a receivable that you could have within the exam. We look at now whereby you've got a non-monetary item, which obviously doesn't require translating at the end of the year. And the issue that we've got now is that that non-monetary item is subject to the revaluation model. Okay, and therefore, we will need to identify the fair value at the end of the year. And when we've identified the fair value, we, we need to do some form of translation to be able to work out the gains or losses. So, so let's just have a look what we're on about exactly with regards to the example. Okay, it's a little bit more, more tricky. Uh, so what you've got there is it says show how the transaction will be recorded in Flowers financial statement. So SFP, profit or loss, cash flows, if you so wish. For the year ended, is it there the 31st of December 2015? Okay, so what we've got there is Flower Inc. So, Inc. presumably an American company, uh, therefore the functional currency being the dollar. Uh, acquired an item of property, plant and equipment. So, remember, PPE is there, isn't it, as non-monetary. So, what you would do is you would translate it at the rate that was in place on the date. You would depreciate it. And at each reporting period, you would not retranslate it, okay, as it is a non-monetary item. Uh, so what you've got there, 1st of January 2011, uh, we bought it at a cost of 72 million dinars. So the rate that was in place on that date would be 3.6. So we need to translate the 72 million dinars into however many million dollars, okay. Uh, once we've done that, we will then depreciate it, straight line over 20 years. So, so that's nice and straightforward. Even more straightforward, nil residual value. Whew. Don't want any residual value to deal with, do we? Uh, and then the key bit now, getting into the foreign currency aspect, is that the 31st of December, so at the reporting date, it was revalued to $95 million. So let's assume that we are adopting the revaluation model. Uh, it was revalued to 95 million dinars. We need to translate that 95 million dinars into the functional currency before we then process any revaluation whatsoever. Okay. Again, we need to translate it at the rate that's in place on that date. So the 31st of December, the historic rate on that date is the 4.3 dinars to the dollar. Okay. So let's go through, have a look at it in terms of the revaluation. So what you've got there is that we have it based upon its cost, which was the 72 million dinars. And was it there at 3.6? Let's just double check. 72 million dinars and the rate was the 3.6. So my historic cost that we have there, 72 divided by 3.6, is there as 20 million dinars dollars isn't it okay so everything we're working in now is in millions of dollars so that's what would have happened was that on january 11 what we need to go through and do now is we need to think about the depreciation so that cost was the first of jan 2011 uh, we need to depreciate that asset isn't it so 20 was it over 20 years but just be careful because when we're looking at the carrying value that's at the 31st of december 2015 wasn't it because then what we can do is we can then revalue that asset up to its fair value okay so how many years all of 11 12 13 14 15 okay so there are five years worth of depreciation. So the carrying value at December 2015 is $15 million. Uh, we revalue it to its 95 million dinars, don't we? But that's in a different currency to our functional currency, isn't it? We need to get it into the functional currency. So translate it at the rate that's in place today, being December 2015, the 31st of December 2015. And that rate there is at 
So 95 divided by 4.3, does that give me $22.1 million? Okay. So what we've got there now is we can look at our surplus. So the gain that you've got, 22.1 less 15, is there as 7 point one million dollars so what you would have there is that gain of 7.1 would go through other comprehensive income or if you like that then feeds directly into your other components of equity don't we the depreciation of five this year goes to your statement of profit or loss if you were asked to prepare the statement of profit or loss and then what you would have there is that the carrying value of 22.1 is what you would have on the statement of financial position, isn't it? Okay, uh, so maybe if you had 15 already in there, you would just add the 7.1 to get it up to the 22.1. Uh, that's it in terms of the example. Uh, so you've got the expense of the depreciation in profit or loss. You've got the revalued amount on the SFP. You've got the gain through other components of equity or your other comprehensive income. The only other thing that I would then go through and think about I know it's not required within the question, but if then subsequently you are asked to consider what happens, you know, what was the treatment of a revalued asset? How do we then subsequently depreciate it? Can you cash your minds back to F7? No, uh, yeah, I'm sure you can. Uh, remember what you did there is that if you revalued your asset up, but it's not even F7, it's F3, isn't it? Going back, way back. Is that once you revalued it upwards, you then depreciated it over its remaining useful life. That sound familiar? Reasonably. So what you would have now is that that 22.1 million, that is the revalued amount, isn't it? You would depreciate that over its remaining useful life. Well, if we've depreciated it for five years out of 20, there are 15 years left, aren't there? So we would depreciate the 22.1 over the 15 years. You can then go off as well and start thinking about excess depreciation and how we can then make a reserve transfer for that excess depreciation. But we'll save all that for another time. I just want you to focus on the revaluation aspect and the revaluation aspect if we have a asset that is denominated in a currency that is different to the functional currency. And the key bit that you need to take from this there is that you take the fair value at the date of revaluation and you translate it at the rate that is in place on that date before you then go through there and consider the revaluation treatment. There you have it. Again, that's cropped up within a, a larger groups question. Uh, it could also crop up as well, if you so wish, within a smaller part of a, of a question two or a question three, specifically examining a part of IS21, being the accounting standard that deals with all of your foreign currency.